bow our knees and worship at your throne we need you lord we need you lord right now come on sing one more time let's sing we need you lord we need you lord we need you lord right now Oh Father, we need you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. Oh, we lift our hands. We lift our hands and bow our knees. And, bow our knees and, worship, at and worship at your throne. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. for waking us all up this morning, Lord. I thank you for letting our events have this thing for the youth, Lord, because our youth are, are falling off, Lord. I need you to bring them back, Jesus, because we our youth are our future. So, God, I ask that you bring us all back because we need them. And, Lord, I ask that you help everyone that is sick, uh, shut in, all those of cancer, all of those who have all type of diseases, Lord, heal them because they need you too. Lord, I ask that you help all of us to be more close to you, God, because all of us aren't. And that we need you, God. So, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. at your throne we need you lord we need you lord right now good morning happy sabbath everyone may the deacons and ushers please prepare for tithes and offering good morning happy sabbath everyone may we all stand as we uh, take our bibles and turn to revelations Chapter 8, chapter 10, my fault. Chapter 10, verses 8 through 11. Again, that is Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 through 11. And when you have it, please say amen. You'll read in my hearing. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea, upon the earth. And I went unto the angel. And said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and that shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou, prof thou must prophesy again, before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the readers and the doers of his holy and inspired word. You may be seated. Pastor Wayne C. Holston enjoys journeying with Jesus and all those who add this to the spice of life. Realizing the blessing of being born to godly parents, Sidney and Cheryl Holston, he cred credits them along with his brother, Ronald, for recognizing the calling God has on his life. Born in Washington, D.C. and raised in Silver Spring, Maryland, Pastor Holston holds an undergraduate degree in government and politics from the University of Maryland at College Park and a Master of Divinity and Seventh-day Adventist SDA Theological Seminary at Andrews University in Bering Springs, Michigan. His ministerial experience includes internships at the Brunswick Heights SDA Church in Gary, Indiana, the Morgan Park SDA Church in Chicago, Illinois, and the Gethsemane SDA Church in Danville, Illinois. Currently, he pastors the New Jerusalem and Bible Chapel SDA churches in East St. Louis and Springfield, Illinois. 
of the Lake Region Conference. Pastor Holson's ministerial focus is preparing, empowering, and equipping people to reach their full potential. This has allowed him to be involved with various public and personal evangelistic efforts, speak at, at, speak at and conduct youth weeks of prayer and revivals, as well as men's ministry conferences. His partner in ministry is none other than his wife of 10 years, the former Cecile DeRue. Hailing from the Isle, the Isle of Jamaica, Cecile graduated from Northern Caribbean University with a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. The couple have, the couple have a six-year-old son, Noah, the most incredible product of their marriage and lives. He made such an impact that they had another amazing, incredible son, two-year-old Isaiah. They live by the motto, when God is in control, anticipate blessings and expect success. After the next election, the next voice you will hear is that of Pastor Wayne Holston. I have 
It's so amazing how God can take something so broken, something so dirty, something so undeserving, something so unworthy, something so low, filled of guilt and shame, and he can take that, take you, and make you whole again, make you brand new with no scars, nothing to show everything poured into the sea of forgetfulness done away with he can make you new again do you believe that today that no matter what you've done in your past no matter what thought that you've had in your mind no matter where you've gone or where you've been he can take you someplace new he can make you whole again he can put you on a new path he can give you something right in your mind he can do amazing wonderful great marvelous abundantly all that you could ask things in your life do you believe that today we can't keep looking back saints we can't keep looking back at those things that hold us and bind us we've got to move forward 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 you may ask me, Sister Hunter, Sister Christina, what does it look like for me to move forward? I can show you. You may hope He can make a new thing in you today. Only God can do that. I will follow you forward. because God is going to move you forward. Come on, if you believe that today, stand to your feet and sing with us today.
sometimes when we say we want to be changed, the reason we're not is that we really don't want to be changed. Mm. God said, you have not because you ask not. In Proverbs 1, he says, if you knock on the door, he will answer. We say we want to stop this and we want to stop having a bad attitude. The reason we are not changed is because we really don't want to stop. Come on, come on. We want to be in our sin. We want to stay in our sin. And our excuse is what we was made in sin. But God said you can be perfect in him. Yes. All things yes. are made new Amen. in Christ. Amen. So as you listen to this song, Withholding Nothing, today we want you to put it all out on the line. Whatever it is that is holding you back from being Christ-like, whatever those thoughts that go through your mind that you don't want somebody to know about, give it to God today. Tell him we are withholding nothing. We want him to take everything. Make us new. When we leave here, we want to be a different people. We want to have a different mindset. Our minds need to be changed. If we are Christians, some of the things that go through our mind is unspeakable, unbelievable. So as, we, as you listen to the song, really open your heart and give God all of those negative things that are inside you. So when you leave, you can be this positive, new, excited, energetic person that is ready to hit the streets, to spread his word, to do whatever he wants you to do. So we are withholding nothing. I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing, yes, amen. withholding nothing. I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, sing with me. I surrender all to you. Everything I give. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender.
What a mighty God we serve. What do you say? Oh, that was a little weak. Come on now. What a mighty God we serve. You know you shouldn't even be here today. You know the devil dispatched demons that should have snuffed you out in the middle of the midnight hour. But you're here today. We, we good now? Can you hear me now? All right. We're going to praise God anyhow. What do you say, saints? Oh, we serve a mighty God. As I was saying, we really should not be here right now. The devil had designs on killing you so you wouldn't be here for this moment. And yet, the devil is a liar because here we are. And we have been praising the awesome God. The one true only God who loved you and has been better to you than you could have ever been or ever be to yourself. And so I count it a privilege to be here in the house today. I don't know about you, but anytime I see young people leading out, and, and I, I've checked the mirror and I got some gray hair sprouting up, so I, 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 it looks like I'm getting a little older here. But anytime I see young people leading out, it gives me encouragement. A lot of times we, as older ones, are quick to criticize. Come on now. We're going to tell the truth and shame the devil. We're in the house of God. We're quick to point out what they're not doing and try to make them be who we want to be, and we're not even there yet. But I was blessed by the prayer. I was blessed by the worship. I appreciate my young brother's excitement, being excited for God, and not taking that energy and using it for the devil. Come on now. And so I've been blessed already, and I appreciate the praise and worship because it's really what it's all about, moving forward from where you are and withholding nothing, complete full surrender to Jesus. Has anybody already made it? Is anybody trying to make it? All right. So we're going forward. We, we're not withholding anything. I want to go ahead and, as Elder Barnes began the process of public affirmation, which I, I, I believe strongly that you ought to let folk know when you greatly appreciate them. It serves no purpose to give them roses when they're dead and they have no noses. They can't smell it. And so I, 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 I noticed first that you engaged in a roll call. And uh, I would have loved if New Jerusalem had been run off that roll call. I would have stood, obviously, 
But, oh, come on, nah, we don't need none of that. But it would not have only been me. For I see some folks in the back, the Hicks family, and also Brother James Rich as well. And so we're grateful to have you here as well. Then I want to go ahead, and I know he is now the conference youth director, uh, but I want to publicly affirm him. He has been a blessing in my ministry, Pastor Donald Rowe. And so I wanted to just say that and uh, know that our prayers are with him as well. And then your current shepherd of this house, Pastor Claval Hunter. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. You ought to not be afraid to put your hands together for the men and women of God who are leading you in these end times. Come on now. And then, of course... We used to say that behind every good man is a woman, but I don't really believe that. I, I've been married for 10 years. I know that's not true. Uh, beside every good man and it's sometimes in front of every good man is a good woman. And so we praise God for Sister Christina, who has just been in blessed by God with amazing gifts. And then, of course, Elder Carl Barnes, who has just been since i've been here for about three and a half years has just been a good friend a, co a confidant i appreciate him and of course his love for young people is infectious contagious and and you ought to put your hands together for the way he allows the lord to lead him and then also his team because he can't do it alone now and so the team and then of course parents who We'll go down to Charleston and we'll do whatever it takes because when it's all said and done, the greatest treasure you have is your child. The devil don't care about your house. He don't care about your cars. He don't care about your clothes. He wants your children because if he can snatch them, he will take a complete generation down the drain. And so I appreciate y'all for being here and taking care of, of the E-A-Y, and we just want to continue to go forward in Jesus' conquering name. With that being said, I want to direct you to the word of God today. Someone said uh, that repetition deepens the impression, and so I want to go back to Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 to 11, and this is what the Word of God has to say, whether you've got the traditional Bible or your iPad or your phone, it's all good. And let me just say this, if in the midst of this uh, sermon, you hear something that God has moved on you because it's not going to be me, it's the Holy Spirit who is driving this thing, and you might want to put that thing on Facebook. I believe the pastor of this house and myself, we are not ashamed to use technology to glorify Jesus Christ. All right? So go on and flood and hit up Facebook and, I don't know, Instagram or whatever you need to do, Twitter, to let it be known that God is up to something good, great, and dynamic. We're going to Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 to 11, and this is what the Word of God has to say to the people of God. I'll be in the King James Version, and this is what the Bible says. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go, take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Verse 9, And I went unto the angel, this is John now, And I went unto the angel and said to him, Give me the book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall make thy mouth sweet as honey. Verse 10, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Verse 11, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Today I just want to talk to you a little bit on the topic, this is our time. This is our time. I'm going to invite you to go ahead and turn to your neighbor, and I want you to go ahead and let them know, neighbor, this is not my time. Neighbor, this is not your time. But with God, this is our time. 
This is our time. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, here we are once again. Dear God, in a world where chaos and confusion is all around, Dear God, sometimes I know it's good up in the church, but we forget the world that we're in. And then the devil likes to trick us and believe that our little world is the world. But dear God, there's a big world out there. And it's stepping on our toes, dear God. This world is trying to take control of our minds. And so, dear God, here we come to a worship experience in need of a little bit more Jesus. And so, dear God, as we go through this message that you have for your people, dear God, I really need to be in the audience. I really don't need to be up here. I need to be a receiver and not a giver. But in this crazy thing, you not only use the foolishness of preaching, but you use fools to preach your word. And so, dear God, I pray that you will hide me behind the cross, that your grace, which is always sufficient, will go ahead and, and from the garbled speech that I have, that it will be a sweet comfort as the Holy Spirit intercepts the pass and runs down the way, all the way to score a touchdown for Jesus as we go through this thing here. When it's all said and done, our commitment to you will be greater. And dear God, we will want to be made over. We thank you and we love you for we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. This is, this is our time. I'm going to invite all of y'all to go ahead and, and take out your cell phones right now. Just take them out. I, I, I don't tell you turn it on or whatever. Just, just take them out. I love my cell phone. I've had about six or seven cell phones in my life already. I, I've had, uh, ever since uh, we got these two boys, um, some of my cell phones have died in the toilet. Some of my cell phones became boats in the tub. And, 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 and that was it for them. But I've loved my cell phone. I love that I'm able to talk to my beautiful wife who is sitting right here. Cecile, if I don't introduce her, I'm going to be on the couch tonight. I love to be able to Look at the pictures of our two sons. I love to be able to send text messages to my brothers and my sisters in ministry, whether they're in pastoral or whether they're in the church, just to encourage them. I, I, I get strength from myself. Or I might go on Facebook and somebody might just hit me up when I'm at my lowest point because uh, that's what I need in this journey, in this life. I just need a little bit of encouragement. How many folk here know that a little encouragement will take you a long way? But I have to say one of the saddest days of my life was associated with my cell phone because I got a text. I was a couple of years ago, I was in Michigan and I got a text and it said, pray for Dexter because he's collapsed. And I couldn't even believe it. I, 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 I didn't even, it didn't even make sense to me. How could a 24 year old just collapse like that? And then three hours later, I heard the sad news that uh, Dexter has died. 24 years old. How many folk here are 24 and above in the house? You wouldn't be here. If you're Dexter, you would be gone right now. And so if you're 24 and below... I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And what I can say is even in the sadness of Dexter's death at 24, he knew Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. This was a brother who was just talented beyond belief. He could play three instruments. He was always there in church. When you're always trying to find who's that young person in ministry that you can latch on to and maybe be the one to, to spark interest in the church and to get other young people on fire. He was my, he was my ministry wingman, if you will. 
I could always go to him. And one of the saddest things was that funeral service when I saw all of those children coming around the casket and breaking down with tears in their eyes. Sometimes you go to funerals and you, you, we all are sad, but somebody who makes an impression in your life just touches you. And for that moment, you recognize that your life will never be the same again. How is it that he could do so much at 24? Some folk are so old as they get older, they never make an impact like this. But this young man at 24 did more than a whole lot will ever do in their whole entire lives. You can learn something from a young person. You can learn something from a young person. And this young man, he went ahead and taught me this, that you've got to make the most with the time you have in your life. Somebody told me, who was much wiser than me, let me know that if you want to get the right answers in life, you have to ask the right questions. And when it comes to this how long will I have on this earth? Where do I want to end up? How do I make my life have so much meaning that if I were to die young, that I still made an impact and I left a legacy? That maybe years down the road, a preacher like this brother here could stand and talk about the impact of this brother who died at 24 years old. Today, your theme for this weekend is Extreme Makeover, a brand new you. And I want to let you know that we can do that because this is our time. And that's what the text is telling us. For there we find John now is in exile. That means he's at a place that he really shouldn't be at. Some of us, truth be told, we're in exile right now. I know that we're in church, but our minds are somewhere else. We've made some arrangements to go somewhere else. We've got some plans later on. And I want to tell you, God brought you here today to block that thing so you would not go in exile. John is in exile for Jesus. I'd rather be in exile for Jesus than be in exile with the devil. And so John just loves Jesus. John can't help himself. Wakes up in the morning, he's got to talk about Jesus. If you shut John up, John can't help himself, but he's going to give some love to somebody because God is love. Whatever John wants to do, wake up in the morning, 24-7, 365, John loves Jesus. And he's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Now, you know when you love Jesus, you will get some haters. So John got to deal with some haters, and I wish, I wish I could only say it was out in the world, but if you read the books of 1 John chapter, uh, 1 John 1, 2, and 3, you're going to find that there are haters even in the church. Folk who have their eyes on you instead of on Jesus. Folk who want to mind your business instead of minding their own business, and then ultimately be on the king's business. And so John has to deal with stuff in the church. John has to deal with stuff outside of the church. And because of that, John has to go into exile. He goes to the Isle of Patmos. Somebody say Patmos. Isolated from everybody in the Aegean Sea by himself. And I want to let you know here today that we've got young people, we've got a lot of folk, young and old alike, who are trying their best to stand up for Jesus. You're trying to keep your, 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 your sexual purity and your virginity, but everybody around you is trying to get a little piece of that thing. But you're trying to stand up. They're bullying you in school, but you're trying to not give in to what they want. They want you to go ahead and cheat. They're trying to get you involved in pornography. They want to get you up into premarital sex. They want to get you to indulge in things that go against God, but you want to love God, but the devil is using folk to hit up on you. So John is us, beloved. If you know about that struggle, if you know about that battle, then you know what John is going through. And all of us, we have been on an Isle of Patmos when we've had to stand up and be the only one. 
when everybody else is looking down on us and everybody else is trying to attack us but I want to encourage you today because I've read the good book and it has let me know that he has promised never to leave you and never to forsake you the Bible says that your mother in Psalms 27 and verse 10 your mama and your daddy may forsake you but the Lord will take you up does anybody here know how it feels so good to be taken up by the Lord so John is there on the Patmos Island by himself and you're there too but I'm so glad that when everybody turns their back on us that's when Jesus steps right in and there in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10 the Bible says John talking I was in the spirit on the Lord's day that when I'm at my lowest point that's when Jesus shows up when everybody is against me when I feel like I'm the only one when I went ahead and got that dirty text message and, and they're, they're going ahead and they're attacking me on Facebook. That's when Jesus will show up. And so John now receives a message and this is it. He's there on Patmos, but God has not forgotten him. And the way that God remembers us is not when he gives us blessings. It's when he calls us to duty and he calls us to action. You see, God is a God about giving you a mission and giving you a purpose. You see, I hear a lot of folk talking about, I want to know my purpose in life. I want to know my purpose in life. And I, I was there. I know about that. But I want to tell you, when you were born into this world, you already had at least one mission, and you knew what your purpose was. Your purpose was to spread the everlasting gospel. Your purpose was to stand up for God. Your purpose was to live a life with him. Don't mean that you're perfect. You're in process. So sometimes we put so much burden and pressure on ourselves that we got to get this thing right no he gets it right inside of me that's how this thing works so your mission your purpose is to spread this gospel it's to stand up and be a billboard for Jesus I drive 64 and I, I, I always see the billboards there and, and, and it lets you know that they're advertising that whatever you're into whatever you're ever you're shopping wherever you're eating hey, hey that's all right but come and look here if I can catch your attention I'm trying to get you to leave from where you're at and go to something new that's all that God is looking for us to be, billboards. Just do the simple things. Just tell somebody you love them. Just let them know that God has not forsaken them. Just let them know that he's got some plans for them. Out of this world, beyond whatever we can think, ask, or imagine. If you do that, then your mission and purpose of what school you want to go to, who you're going to marry, where you're going to go, what you're going to do, it's all going to fall into place. Somebody told me when you're on the king's business, He'll take care of your business. And so here it is. John gets something. It's unrolling now. John chapter 1 and 2 and 3, we get the message to the three churches. Let's us know that God still cares for his people. He's walking among the candlesticks. Candlesticks represents churches. And you thought it was the pastor's fault? The pastor ain't the head of the church. Ain't no member the head of the church. It's Jesus who's the head of the church. Things might not go the way you want it to go. But hey, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. It's Jesus who's in control. And so it lets us know there. It goes on in chapters 4 and 5 of Revelation. And chapter 4 is the great praise and worship session because Jesus has overcome the land, because overcome Satan. And in verse 5, chapter 5, he's worthy to take the scroll. That scroll there in chapter 5 is that Jesus, because he has defeated Satan, now has power to have authority over the events that will happen in the end time. That's why you are not to be scared of what's going to happen because if you're connected to Jesus, then you're going to be safe. If you're connected to Jesus, you'll have power to endure to the very end. In chapter 6, 7, and 8, we find the sealing. We find uh, the seals of God. And it goes on and on, all the while letting us know that God is in control of the world. So who has control of you? Let's bring that thing on home. Who has control of you? Is it God 24-7, 365? Or are we trying to make it on our own? 
because things that have happened to us and, and, and maybe we were abused, misused, we, we were mistreated. And so now because of that, we say that ultimately I can't help myself. I was born this way. I hear a whole lot of that in the noise of the world, but I want to tell you we were all born in sin, shaping in iniquity, but God alone has the power to change up some things. He is a change agent, so whatever I was, I can be born again. I can change. Thank you, Jesus. And so there he is. Now we come to chapter 10. And now that scroll in chapter 5 is put into the hands of John. You see, Jesus got it. But the mission and the purpose that Jesus is given, he does not keep it to himself. He gives it to his people. And so here it is. If Revelation is the book of the revelation, the revealing of Jesus Christ, then it's not a book anyone should be scared of. All you need is the Holy Spirit. Pray on that thing. Read that thing and go share that thing. Because now John is given this book. And in this book, it reveals not only, not only the word of God, but the end time events that everybody needs to know about. So what have I been saying thus far as I've been laying down the, the, the background on this thing? The mission and the purpose of God's people is to inform the people of the world of the events of the end time. You want an extreme makeover? God is saying, I need my people to stand up and to take the mission and the purpose that I gave them when I put the scroll in your hands. You see, John represents you, and John represents me. I'm not going to be an arrogant Adventist right now, but I will do what I'm supposed to do. There are some truths that we as Adventists have that should make us available and not arrogant or ashamed. There are some truths that we need to be telling folk because if they don't know the devil will deceive them and they will end up in the lake of fire I'm talking about my friends I'm talking about my family members I'm talking about your family your mom or your daddy I'm talking about your cousin I'm talking about those kind of folk what I'm saying is we can't keep going about the same way the same way we can't do the same things we all including this preacher I need an extreme makeover why I said I, I feel so uncomfortable standing up here in front of you today. I feel like I should be sitting down because I'm in desperate need of Jesus and I need to be focused on what our mission is for this time. And I'm not the only one because what has, when we have stepped out of our mission, what has overtaken us? We got worship wars about this kind of music and that kind of music that occupies the church. God don't care. Oh, I think God would care more that we're spreading the gospel and saving folk from certain death as opposed to whether we got the drum up in here or we got the Hammond organ in here or we got the string instruments in here. Whether we're going to always sing about the hymns or we're going to sing about how Jesus went ahead and stepped out of glory, put his hand down and saved us and lifted us up from the muckery mire of sin and now safe are we. We allow the worship wars to get in the way of what God has ordained us to do. And so we believe that that is our mission instead of going out to save people. Thank you very much. I'm a big time sweating man. Thank you. I appreciate that. So here it is. Your mission, your purpose is to go and share some things with some people. And so very quickly, I don't intend to spend a lot of time on this. But John is teaching us at least three things and I want to share that with us right now number one this passage John chapter uh, to Revelation chapter 10 verses 8 to 11 number one it's letting us know that we need to be relevant somebody say relevant, relevant. by definition relevant simply means is that you have something to say at the right time Amen. at the right time Peter talks about that we ought to be in the present truth. What that simply means is all the other truths that have come from the past, we build on that. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know about no Sabbath school without the Methodists. I wouldn't know about water baptism without the Baptists. I wouldn't know about, about a commitment to the daily life without John and Charles Wesley. I don't denigrate other people, but they have passed the baton and they have said it's time for you to take it through the unction of the Holy Spirit and it's time for you to go ahead and take that thing and run. 
So what is it that we have to be relevant about? We have some truths that God has ordained us as the people of God at this time, not the only people of God, but tasked with this to go ahead and share some things about these end times. In the book of Matthew chapter 24, three times Jesus warns the church. He, he's talking about T.O.P. here today. He talked to us and said don't be deceived and in that deception he said that the devil is going to come impersonating an angel of light his demons will come also and impersonate apostles when you take a look at the tv and you see movies and programs about how when you die you still live forever when you see the demonic taking over everything even hip-hop culture and entertainment if you saw the super bowl two years ago with beyonce that was nothing more than a demon demonic worship act is seen above before millions of people do you think that the devil is going to be quiet while we are quiet no the devil is going to do whatever he can saints of God to press his advantage and what God is saying to us today is as young people and all people, it is up to us to stand up. You got Holy Ghost power. Last time I checked, there is nothing stronger than the power of God. Mm, maybe you don't know about it, but somebody in here knows that when you had cancer and you should have been DOA, but instead you were resurrected through the power of God. Maybe your children had gone away. You had to go find them in a crack house somewhere. But God put a hand over them and now they're able to be in the house of God today. Maybe that marriage should have been torn in tatters. Maybe you should have been abused and just thrown to the heap. But God made a way for you to be. That's the power of God. So we can do this. And so we ought to be out there and we've got to. And I'm going to touch on this in a hot second. But we got to let folk know, saints. That when you die, you don't go to heaven. How many folk know Elder Tory McRae? You should know him. This is his home base. I went to a funeral and, and, and some of my folks were there. Uh, the Hicks and, 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 and Brother Rich. We were there yesterday. And this brother went at the funeral. And, and perhaps it's his family. So I don't know if I would have done this. I'm be honest. But this brother went there and he started to share the truth about the state of the dead. Most of the, uh, and there were pastors, his, his daddy was not Seventh-day Adventist, but his daddy loved the truth. And he was not ashamed to tell that to them. What I'm saying is sometimes we're going to have to not be uh, ashamed because I don't think arrogance is our biggest problem as Seventh-day Adventists, young people and young people at heart. I don't think it's arrogance that's the issue. I think our greatest issue is we are ashamed. But what if they go ahead and hit us up with some questions that we don't know? Come on now. What if they don't want to be our friends anymore? What if they ostracize me or put me out of the family? What if when I go to the family reunion, they make me have to go and eat up in the kitchen while everybody at the big table? What if, what if I got to deal with stuff for being, for being put out? And I want to tell you something here, that it's all right if you endure for a little while, for he that shall come will come and will not tarry. That the power of God is able to get us through any situation. But we're not going to make it to heaven on a bed of roses. I wish. When I was, how old are you brother? 23. I wish I was 20. I wish I was even younger. That I could hear somebody tell me what's the mission as a young person. What are we up against? What am I dealing with? Y'all probably know more than, y'all could clue us in on what's going on in the world today. When we see it on the news, we, we, we're, about, we're about five years late on that. I wish somebody could have sat down and let me know, what is it? What is the true mission? Is it simply just to be here and have great worship or is it to turn the world upside down? And as young people, you are tasked with that. I'm going to tell you, it's too big for you. It's too big for you. But God says, I have called you young men because you are strong. You are strong not because of the muscles you have. You're strong because his power, his Holy Spirit is inside of you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? That's where the strength comes from. My sisters will prophesy. 
And together as young people, we can turn this world, I'm sorry, we can turn the church uh, uh, together, we can turn it upside down. Now, for those of you who are going to ask me, well, doesn't this relate to 1844? Yes, it does. But what I have learned is this. Oftentimes when we keep putting God's truth in the past, we miss out on the present blessings and favor that he wants to shower on us. So I, I'd let you off the hook. I, I'd let myself off the hook if I came here to talk about 1844. That was great, but what about now? Because we're in crisis. We're losing folk. Folk joining other, uh, 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 folk are joining other churches and other movements, and sometimes they're just giving up altogether on God. Well, folk, now we 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 not focus on what does the word say, and then as I'm struggling, Jesus. I mean, I love this man, I love this woman, I love eating this, I love going here. I, I'm struggling with the word of God, but that's when you got to go in to get into your closet, and you got to have a a heart to heart with the Holy Spirit, and you got to say, Spirit of the Living God, this is hard, but I want to tell you, it's not harder. That's hard when I was down and out in sin, and and I and everybody abandoned me but you came along and you picked me up and you lifted me up and you changed my life so I'm trusting you Holy Ghost to love me enough to love me to the truth people of God we've got to be we've got to be we've got to we've got to get to the point where we can not only say it and not be ashamed of it Second coming of Jesus is coming very soon. Folks scared. Folk are shook up about what is going on in the world today. No seven-day Adventist should be that way. I can't sugarcoat it. None of us should be that way because we got the Bible to tell us and we got a God who loves us. So what's the excuse that I have? I'll put it on me. What excuse do I have? We should not have fear and doubt to take us away from what God has for us. We got to let people know. And when they talk about this stuff, we got to take them to Matthew 24. We got to take them and let them know what's going on in the news. We got to speak the language that they speak and stop speaking church speak. I don't know about you, but this is not my complete life. God didn't make me to be in a four-wall box. God said, I'm supposed to be a, a, a messenger of the greatest gospel that has ever been. In fact, the word gospel means good news. It's the best news. Elder Barnes went ahead and said on the Super Bowl, he was looking and I don't know. I know Sister Barnes is a great cook, so he probably was there kicking back with that awesome food. But when they had went ahead and, and, ran, and, ran, and, and Russell Wilson threw that touchdown pass, you probably spilled all of that stuff there. He got excited for what a man did. You ought to get excited what God did. And you ought to look like it. I mean, who would want to be around some folk who got the same stresses like everybody else and talk about they going to heaven and they got the Holy Ghost? You ain't got no Holy Ghost. You know how to fake it till you make it. And on that one, I'm right here with y'all. But we got to flip that script. Come on, somebody. So we got to be relevant what we say. And there's a whole lot of things. Don't be ashamed. Just go study that thing. And you'll be surprised. What I've learned in my walk so far is Seven Day Adventists, we, we are exposed to so much. We know so much more. A lot of times we give people overload. Just want to go ahead and start them off and start them off with a 2300 day prophecy. Want to go ahead and start them off with the Revelation seminar. They don't want none of that. They just want to know how I can fix my marriage. How can I stop being addicted to porn? How is it I can hold down a job? How is it that I can get healed from the sexual abuse that I endured when I was a little boy? Tell me that. Does your Jesus work for you? If he works for you, then I want some of Jesus. So this is what he's looking for. Not only what we say, but we have to be relevant where we sit. You see, most folk are going to come to Jesus, not because they're here in the worship experience. It's because the worship experience went to them. I love what my sister said in the praise team when she went ahead and said that, you know what, we're going to take this to the streets. You see, that's how the church grew in the book of Acts. 
facts and I want to let you know that's where we're going right now the word of God everything that's going ha is happening now we are actually moving back till we get to the garden of Eden and once again we can be face to face with Jehovah Jireh that's what's happening and so you're going to find there in the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 6, it says, "Those who have turned the world upside down have now come to our city. What if they could say that about us? They will one day. Because this Holy Ghost is going to come down in power. Revelation chapter 18, 1 to 4. Go back and study it. I'm just giving you basic SDA Bible uh, text right there. It ought to lift you up. Because God says, I'm going to use you to help spread this gospel so other people can come on in and enjoy what you enjoy right now. That's all he's saying. And so if we can go ahead and do that, then we give honor to God. And not only honor to God, but we're going to help somebody along the way. And there's an old song that says that if I can do that, then my living will not be in vain. Remember the story of, of I heard about Robert and Eric. Robert, about 20, 21, 20, 21 years old. And he, he, he got addicted to pornography. I, 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 these are issues, right? So I hope we, 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 we're not going to be disturbed that, oh, he was too bold with coming up in here. All right? So he was dealing, he was battling pornography addiction. And Eric and Robert, they were boys. That's Robert. And so uh, Robert tried to get Eric to get in that thing with him. And Eric said, you know what? I can't do that, brother. You know, I ain't perfect. I mean, I got some struggles along the way, but I cannot do that thing. I'm trying to get my relationship with God on point. I, sometimes, I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm walking in the dark, and then other days I feel like Jesus is right next to me. Have you ever been there? But in spite of all of that, even when I can't see him, I got to trust him because he's been good to me. Better than I can even be good to myself. He goes ahead and he says, he don't cut off Robert, though. He says, Robert, I can't do that with you. But you know what? I keep picking y'all, but y'all front row. He says that, you know what? I'm not going to give up on you. But what I will do is I'm going to keep on praying for you. Year one passes. Year two passes. Year three passes. How much time does it take to save a soul? So the problem is we got, we, we got stopwatches on the wrong stuff. We got stopwatches on the sins. We don't put stopwatches on the sins we love. We got stopwatches on the, when it comes time, Jesus is trying to tell us to do something. I'm sure somebody went ahead and looked at the clock already when they, I started to preach. I wonder how long is this bearded brother going to be speaking to us? This is the word of God. You ought to, you ought to eat this thing up. Because the day's going to come and they're going to close the churches. And we ain't going to have this anymore. So how long does it take to save this brother if you care for him? If you love him, if you got that agape, unconditional love, if you got, if you, are you from Berean, if you got that Berean tabernacle of praise kind of love going on. And so he says, I'll be your accountability partner. I'll tell you when they've got a, a, how to break addictions. I, I read this book called uh, Every Man's Battle, and I, I learned some things. Now, that's not my battle, but I love you, so I'm going to pour into you so you can get the breakthrough because that's what church folk do. That's what folk who know the mission of Je Revelation 10, 8 to 11 do. It's not about your intellect. It's about your heart. After five years, he came to a breaking point. Robert did. And Robert ultimately said, you know what? I, I really appreciate that you never gave up on me. And he says, I need you to go ahead. He sends him a text message and lets him know, you know what? I'm feeling tempted. Can you pray for me? It's the first time he reaches out to him. And it begins the process, ups and downs. It, sometimes it's not straight through, ups and downs. But ultimately he gets victory. Because his friend never turned his back on him. Victory not when he was in the church, but victory at his, as he's at his computer, 2 a.m. in the morning. Because Robert, because Eric was right there for him and broke the cycle of addiction right there. If that could happen for him, how about for us? If I were to ask us how many folk, where were you when you decided to give your life to Jesus? A lot of us wouldn't say it was in here. We'd say it might have been on the street.
drink when I just left the crack house. It might have been when I just went ahead and finished my last sip of Hennessy. It might have been when I just left that lady's house and while we was doing the do, I noticed that it just wasn't right and I was hearing the voice of God speak to me and I needed to reach out to you and you were there for me. It's not only that we are relevant in what we say, but it's where we are relevant where we sit. Where are you sitting? God have mercy on all of us because they know us to be arrogant and they know us to only stay to ourselves and they don't know that we're willing to go the extra mile for somebody. I confess that publicly to God right now. I need to get closer to him. I need the extreme makeover. How about you? Well, it's not only that, but you got to keep it real. Relevant and you got to be real. In the passage, we find that the angel says you got to eat this book. It's not that you read the book. You got to eat the book. So it's more than just simply, well, you know, I read that thing. You know, I'm good to go. I can teach it. You know, I got the, I got the respect of my church family. You know, I'm a do to do. No, it's not that. You've got to eat this thing. This thing has to become a part of you. To make folk know a lot about Jesus. But they don't know him. They don't have relationship with him. And we've got to flip that thing because God hates fake. Say with me, I hate fake. Hate fake. In the book of Revelation chapter 3, you know it, 14 to 22, it's the Laodicean message. Laodicean means lukewarm. Why are these folk lukewarm? They're lukewarm because on Monday they're for God. On Tuesday they're for Satan. Uh, they get help in church on Saturday, but on Saturday night they go uh, to the club and they do everything else. They're lukewarm, and it doesn't mean that God don't love them. He loves sinners. But he hates sin. And why does he hate sin? Because sin breaks your heart. Sin crushes your hopes, dreams, and aspirations. And that's why in John 10 and verse 10, Jesus stands up and say, The thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Sin kills, but God saves. And so, if we're going to be real, we've got to be transparent with God. Right now in the world today, as people go ahead and study demographics and try to study psychologists, what are people into, and, and these are things we ought to know because we ought to be in the business of saving folk, and you got to know where they stand before you can go ahead and sit and try to talk to them. There are three things that people are looking for. People are looking for community. Is there a place where I can belong. Now the community doesn't need to go ahead and, 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 and uh, let its standards down. Jesus doesn't let his standards down. But the community and Jesus lets his love lead out even before the standards. That sister was caught in sexual adultery. Guilty as all get out. But Jesus says, where are your accusers? They aren't here. No, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. She was guilty, but his love outstanded the standard and worked with it to lift her on up. Sometimes we guilty of that thing, man. We reverse that thing. And then the thing is, when we walk away, we shake our head and we say, well, yeah, I told them so. And then whatever God want to do with them, that's up to them. Uh, but I don't care. I've done my job. No, you have not done your job. For in Galatians 6 and verse 1, it says that we ought to be in the business of restoring the fallen. God have mercy. God have mercy on us. And so we've got to be real. We've got to be real. To be real means that you're authentic. To be real means that you're, 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 you're not trying to fake it or anything like that. And so here it is. They're looking for community. They're looking for transparency. They're looking for people who are willing to tell their story. Do you have a God story? Can you tell your God story in 15 minutes? You see, what I've learned is this. Folk, they don't want to hear the Bible story. They don't want to hear the Bible text or anything like that. They're not into proof texting. Now, the Bible is true, and I believe in it. But this is what I've seen, and I've lived it, that when I live the word of God, 
that bad boy is contagious. I mean, when you live the word of God, when you look like God has come into your home because he's been knocking on that door and you open that thing up and you've got chaos in your home, he don't say go clean up your home and then open the door. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Open up unto me and I will come in and I will sup. I will spend time with you. Oh God, have mercy. At Seven Day Adventist, one of our greatest problems is we're afraid to open the door. We want to go ahead and fix up the place. We want to go ahead and call husband, come on home through the back door because Jesus is at the front door knocking and we got to get this place clean because I heard somewhere that cleanliness is next to godliness. That's not in the Bible, but I heard it anyway. Uh, we go ahead and we call. We go ahead and we call our friends. Come on over and help me clean up this house because you know Jesus don't play that stuff. And what Jesus Jesus says, forget about all of that. Just open up the door and let me come into your heart. You can't change it. My young people, and I, this thing just killed me. Growing up, I gave up on God because I thought I was just too dirty. I was too sinful. I thought that this thing was just a joke about how I'm going to be holy and I ain't going to do these things anymore. But the temptations were so great to me and I gave in to them and I failed. Does anybody know about that? But this is why this thing is good news. Because I heard that there's a Jesus who still loves me in spite of my stuff. But he just don't club me and put his arm around me because he's not an enabler of sin. He is a transformer. He is a savior to sin. He can give you the power to not lay down with that sister. He can give you the power not to cheat on that exam. He can give you the power to not go ahead and take that alcohol beverage sip. He can go ahead and say, I'm not going to the club. Ain't nothing good in the club. Club. I ain't passing tracks in the club. I ain't praying for folk in the club. I'll pray on some folk, but I ain't praying for some folk up in the club. I ain't going to do none of that. Jesus is saying, I can change you. I'm telling you, is that good news or what? Maybe I'm the only one who has walked around with a nervous breakdown because you believe that you're about to lose your mind because of the sin in your life. And then Jesus steps on in and with the Holy Ghost power changes your life. And now that stuff that you look at, see, I used to love you, but I'm in love with Jesus now and I can walk away. Song said, move forward. I can move forward now away from all of my addictions, away from my anger, away from my frustrations, away from the backbiting and the lying, the anger and the conniving because Jesus is leading the way and I'm walking in his shadow oh don't you love to talk about him have mercy so we got to be running the last thing they love spirituality and they say religion I said spirituality they are looking for folk who just have a connection with Jesus and it's so attractive that they're looking to have that Yes, the commandments that we keep are an extension, first and foremost, of our love for Jesus and him in our hearts. You can't keep them commandments. It's impossible. Have you seen them? Man, that thing is ridiculous. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on now. So before we can get, go out there, before we can be relevant and be real, I just want to listen. We got to make sure we get some stuff. We got, we got to get on point. It's a winning gospel. It won you. It won me. It's keeping some of you. I wanted to keep all of you. I wanted to keep me too. But if we just hold on to his unchanging hand, we going to go ahead and we going to get there. So how do you get real with Jesus? I'm not going to break no new ground here. Make time to spend time with him. Amen. By beholding, you become. Yes. And we want to be like. Christ. There it is. We want to be like Christ Jesus. So spend time with him. I, whatever you got to do, do that thing. Talk to him in prayer. And then not only be so focused on yourself. As you start to reach out, because look, we all hurting folk. But as you start to reach out for others and help them, then the healing starts to come to you. Do I have a witness in this place of how God changed you when you started to reach your hand out instead of balling that thing up? 
especially at the business meeting, but that's another story. Come on now. <laughs> so here it is. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. We're coming to the last one. It's rescue. It's rescue. Why would God give John that message? It's to rescue people from certain death. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says the wages of sin is death. That means as a sinner, I work. I got an IRA. Come on now. I got a 401k. I went and got me some bonds and some annuities. Come on now. I got investments and every time they pay a dividend every quarter for sin. I get that. That's what I earned. I deserve eternal death. And I want to tell you, yes, he died. But now he's given us the opportunity and the choice to say yes to life and no to Satan, yes to victory, and no to defeat, yes to the best days and not the yesterdays, yes to a hope and an expected future. So we stand right now between the living and the dead. And sometimes we say that and we objectify it. It's like we talk about it in the third person. That's my wife. That could be me. That's my sons and my daughters. That's my mama, my, 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 my brother. That, that's my family, dear God. But he says, I've put you in there. And I know sometimes they hard-headed. I, I know you didn't pick your family. Some of us, if we could, we put our family on eBay. Come on now. <laughs> but God says, no. I put them with you and you with them. And while you only can look from now to the future, I, God, remember when you were stank and rank in your sin. All ratchet, tore up from the floor up. I remember how you used to be. So don't get no selective memory on me right now. Because somebody prayed for you. Somebody worked for you. I'm here because my grandmama, 92 years old, died a year and a half ago. But that's it prayed for me. I had a mama and a daddy who prayed for me. I've seen them shed tears because of the stuff I put them through. But when you're connected to Jesus, you'll do whatever you can for your baby boy to make sure that they are in the ark of safety. So it's about rescue. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says we in spiritual warfare. And then Paul goes ahead and says put on that whole armor children. And then after you put on the whole armor, now that you've got that shield of faith, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and I want you to march up on the, on the kingdom of Satan. And as he's throwing fiery darts at you, as he's throwing porn at you, as he's throwing uh, premarital sex at you, as he's throwing uh, fear at you and doubt at you and, 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 and hate at you and, and abuse at you, as he's throwing these things at you, but you've got your shield there and you're walking forward. Paul paints the picture that the devil's fortress is right here. He's a defeated foe. His time is almost over. Jesus kicked him out of heaven. Jesus beat him in the garden of Gethsemane by putting enmity. Jesus beat him over the body of of Moses. Jesus beat him there at Calvary and Jesus wants to beat him every day of your life. When you choose Jesus, you're a winner and Jesus wants to give you the victory so you keep marching. Berean, you keep marching forward. Lighthouse, you keep marching forward. Northside, you keep marching forward. Agape, you keep marching forward. Top, you keep marching forward. A new Jerusalem, you keep marching forward. For I want to tell you that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. I know that it's not easy all the time, but I know that Jesus never sleeps and he never slumbers. I know Jesus is never leaving me nor forsaking me. I know Jesus has got some power, wonder working power, power uncontrollable power unstoppable power that goes beyond my problems that's the God I serve that's the Jesus I'm linked with so you take your shield of faith and you keep marching on against the devil and when you march get
get that brother and say come on up out of the kingdom of Satan and come on in to the kingdom of God you ought to come on up now you go ahead you say some more and then y'all go back now and get some folk to come on up here come on up brother we got the shield of faith and we gonna beat the devil come on sister you come on up we bringing couples up in here right now go on and get somebody and bring them back come on sister this is what I'm talking about right here go get somebody take them out take them out from the kingdom of the devil and bring them on back come on up front here let's get some more I don't like the numbers I want more folk up in this camp for Jesus come on now come on now go get somebody and bring them on home let them know the best is yet to come let them know it ain't over till God says it's over come on grandma we gonna make it to the kingdom yes 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 yeah yeah get somebody it feels good don't it feel good to be up here it's great yeah don't it feel good bro it feels good go get some more I heard somewhere they said it's plenty good room uh, in my father's kingdom. I can't have my young man looking dead at me in the face and I don't get that young brother. Come on in. Come on, my sister. Praise God for your sister. Come on now. Heaven wouldn't be right without you. Go on and get somebody. I didn't even have to go get him. He came on because he liked what he saw. That's what I'm talking about. Easy evangelism. Come on up. If you can, come on up, my brother. You bring your children. Jesus loves children. Come on up. Y'all seen it now. Work with a brother. Just go to the side. Come on now. You seen it now. It's too good. You can't stay seated when all these folk got some Jesus in them. You got to get it too. Yeah. So here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Oh boy, heaven gonna look like this. Heaven gonna look like this. I will no longer be an arrogant Adventist. Can't be that. But for the grace of God, go I. I'm not gonna be ashamed because I might not be able to preach like Peter. I can't sing like Paul. But I can tell somebody about the love of Jesus and what he's done for me. They'll get that later, but let them get Jesus first. Come on now. Stand here, stand here, because I'm going, I'm, here's the appeal. Because it feels good. But before we can start feeling good, we got to get right. Little boy. Seventh-day of Venice, sat in a church like this, and was amazed at how pastors could stand on up and preach to, among numbers like this. He was scared. But he would go home, and in front of a, a, a pole that upheld the basement, one of them beams, he would be preaching his little soprano seven-year-old voice out. Years would go on, and he would remember that his mama would say, I'm going to the grocery store. And he said, Mom, I want to come, but let me go ahead and get my little revised standard version Bible. I want to read the word of God. Went to high school, have mercy. Hormones started raging, raging, and he started rearranging. He said, the Bible got to go under. And I got to see what's going on in these music videos, because that's what I want to be. I got to get me some girlfriends. God created women because, you know, he had a hormone change. God created women and they look real good. And he got to get some. And time would go on. And as he went ahead and put the Bible down, he picked up some satanic habits. And while he never went to jail, for over 12 years, he lived a jail-like life. Seeing everybody in his life get ahead, his friends, everybody seemed to have favor, but he had failure. 
he came to a breaking point. Years later, he got into a car accident and it still kind of sobered him up and let him know that boy, I could have died. So I don't know if I'm ready for that Jesus thing, but let me start going to school and start trying to make something of myself. Ended up being in an honors program in one of the larger universities uh, where he lived. But the pressure was too much because how many folk here know you can try, but you can't make it without Jesus. And when he has a calling on your life, and he has a calling on everybody's life right here, you can run from him, but he'll be running after you. That young boy went ahead. He's a, he's a man, but mentally he's a boy. And so he goes to his parents and he tells them, you know what, I, I'm getting ready to have a nervous breakdown here. I'm losing my mind because I know what to do right, but I end up wanting to do wrong all the time. And I've run away from Jesus and I don't know if I'm ever going to make it back. And I feel like I've given up my no good. And he's gone already and written suicide poems. And his parents don't judge him. They get relevant and they meet him in his pain and they get real with him they don't sweep the situation under the rug but they're real with him they're authentic because he's been looking at them they don't have it made in the shade but what he recognizes is even when his mama is going back to school he'll see that she works 12 hours in the in the day at, at night and still goes to class in the day but she always has the bible next to the textbook and he's got all the time in the world, but he's failing and he's looking and he's wondering, what is it about this old woman who keeps getting ahead? And he recognized it must be God. God makes the yeah. difference. So they open up and they say, try this. It's Isaiah. Somebody get this for me. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 to 31. I want to read it. I don't want to even memorize it. I want to read it. Have mercy. I almost turned to it. Look at that. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 and this is what saved his life do you not know have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youth grow weary and tired, and strong men stumble and, stumble and fall, yet those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I want to tell you that when I read that passage of scripture on October 15, 1998, that saved my life. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have a wife and two children. I shouldn't be have the title of pastor. I don't, if I'm honest with you, I don't even know how to wear that title. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I just got to live by this or I'll lose my mind. I can't make it through the day if I don't have Jesus. And when I don't have him, I have a bad day. I've recognized I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Jesus, let me make it to heaven. I'll eat the crumbs from the table. I'll do whatever you say. Somebody here today needs an extreme makeover. Somebody needs to be made over again. I want you to just listen to a little bit as we stand, we stand, we stand. Because I love the way you look right now. Because you look like some overcomers. You look like what it's going to be like in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. When we are overcomers and we wave them palm branches. And we, we take off those crowns and throw it at his feet. Make me over. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your very presence. Yes. Living in me.
This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I I'm lost without you Come on sing This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Oh you are my air sing This is my daily bread. I need you every day, Lord. You are my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Oh, you're your very word is spoken. Oh, it's spoken to me. Anybody come to the point where they recognize that if I don't have him, I don't have life? Anybody here that they want to say, dear God, I want to commit my life to you. I don't know what the next minute is going to hold. But what I want to do, dear God, is I want to make sure that you hold me in that next minute. If it's your desire today to commit yourself to God and for what I've said you want to be relevant you want to be real you want to be a rescuer of your family of your friends of your church of your co-workers of anybody else I'm going to ask you to just raise your hand in the air right now God you see this father you see this and I want to tell you that it's not that he's looking so that he can hold it against you he's looking so he can lift you up now, while you're doing that, praise God, I don't know. But I'm going to need some folk to pray right now. So every head is bowed and every eye is closed. And so right now, we can't have something like this. And we don't open up the doors of the church. Maybe as you look at your life, you recognize that I need Jesus. I, I don't need anything else. I, I've been told a whole lot of that. But I need to make a surrender to Jesus. I've got to do it because I've got loved ones who need to be saved. And Jesus says my mission is to be a tool to save them. So today, you're here. You've got problems in your life. And they're getting in the way of being all that God would have you to be. And so I'm asking if that's you today, we are come on down, we're gonna have special prayer for you. It's not about what we're looking at each other and seeing, oh, they came, this, that, uh, it's that I know what I need. And Jesus, I just sang, I'm desperate for you. Now I wanna take a step of faith. I wanna step forward. Is there anybody here today who needs power, Holy Ghost power to save your family? If you're here today, I'm gonna invite you to come on down. Come on down. That's you right now. That means your anger needs to be checked. 
that means that you got to stop being ashamed of the gospel whatever it is you're going to be you're, you're going to do whatever it takes and you're coming here for special prayer i want to be a warrior for jesus i don't just want to hear this word i want to step forward i want to go where god is asking me to go is there anybody else who needs to be included in this prayer right now don't be scared of what god is going to do to you be happy about what god is going to do for you anybody else young oh i don't care you know what you need to do the holy ghost is saying this now he ran this thing from the moment i said i'd come he's been here the whole day with us he's saying now if you need that thing you need to come up here right now for that special prayer hallelujah to the we make room for you come on to the altar come on in come on in come on in the holy spirit is speaking to you now don't care how long you've been a member don't care if you're not a member you just need some jesus because you've got some folk to save you ain't playing with this thing now you need holy ghost power because if you go back the same way god have mercy but if you take him and say jesus i need to go ahead of me what you're going to find is you're going to have victories in your family. You're going to have victories in your finances. You're going to have victory and courage to stand up in your relationship. Will you say yes to him? Will you step forward for Jesus today? I'm lost without you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My young people see it. Hallelujah. Your young people see it. Hallelujah. Anybody need to join them here? The power of God is here. But you got to take a step forward, a step of faith. Is this it? Is there anybody else? I'm battling demons, Jesus. I'm lost without you. Some folk, this is more than just a church service. This is their freedom. This is how they will repel the demons that are in their lives and in their homes. And a body need to be covered in this prayer specifically. And then lastly, as we're praying saints, I need a praying house now. I need a praying house. We are standing between the living and the dead right now. Demons are holding back. Demons are fighting. Demons are speaking doubt and fear in this house. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I plead his blood loose and free loose and free loose and free in this house your heads are bowed your eyes are closed maybe there's somebody here who needs to get baptized perhaps for the first time or you need to be rebaptized. i'm giving that opportunity as well if you're here today all it takes is a hand up in the air for jesus if that's you if that's your situation i need baptism or rebaptism here today I want to go all the way with Jesus. All the way with Jesus. If you're here today, I'm just going to invite you to just raise your hand. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. It's you and Jesus now. If that's your situation, don't go halfway. Go all the way with him. Are you here today? Pastor Hunter will be here. I will be here. If you need to come and speak to us, you can go ahead and do that right after service what a god we serve we're gonna pray to close this thing out i'm inviting my folk down here just come into a little circle come into the circle come into the circle a little circle here among a real big circle everybody's connected nobody's left out what are you saying in this place Amen. heavenly father we give you glory adoration and praise right now dear god you showed up and you showed out dear god your love for us is just so ridiculous that even when our promises are ropes of sand, you still love us and you still speak sweet nothings in our ear. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. My love is always for you. You can do it. You can make it. And so we believe, dear God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, dear God, I pray for the folk who are here in this circle. They're battling issues, dear God. Demons are attacking. 
but we rebuke that in the name of Jesus and I want them to know above all else dear God that whom the Son sets free is free indeed I want them to say goodbye to that thing and hello to the power of the Holy Ghost Dear God, I pray you will put a hedge of protection around them. That you will baptize them with your Holy Spirit. And for the outer circle, dear God, we raised our hands to say we want to be about relevance. We want to be real. We want to rescue. So baptize us too, dear God. Let our church be a changed church. Let our churches be a place where the sick can come and know they can find healing and acceptance, dear God. Let the world be turned upside down here in St. Louis and forever let us be available Adventists not arrogant not ashamed available because we're connected to Christ the King baptize and protect my young people dear God they've been leading out and they let out even up here dear God I pray that you will bless us keep us and if we should never meet again like this on earth oh God let us make a date uh, around the tree of life uh, on that glass sea of glass dear God and let us rejoice and sing hallelujah about how we made it over we thank you we bless you for we ask this in the name of Jesus amen and amen you ought to put your hands together for what God has done in this place on today God bless you all. You can go back to your seats.